Okay, so we've talked about the seeker. We've talked about the search. Let's talk a little bit about the sacred. Wars have been fought over what people mean by the sacred. How do you see the sacred? First, I think it's very important to, to, to make it clear. The sacred isn't anything that can be thought about. If people just understood that, war would come to an end. Mm-hmm. The ideals, all of the belief systems, the traditions built out of the belief systems, all of that very, very uh, deeply entrenched conditioning that the way I feel when I think about my God is the same as a relationship with God has put men and women on this planet at each other's throats for thousands and thousands of years. Because I don't care what religion you talk about, even those that don't acknowledge the existence of a, of a divine uh, being, in quotes, the root of them is love. Not separation, not distinction, not difference. Yes, each religious... Uh, uh, tradition brought forward is, is, is replete with the cultural mandates that were part of the creation of that religion at its time. But when you separate all of that business out, you have individuals in every corner of the world who were touched by something that could not be touched by the human mind. And it was the touch of that sacred that instilled in them what then became the groundwork, the foundation of whatever system was born afterwards. Okay, in just the last few minutes, what is the most important message that you want readers to take away from the seeker, the search, the sacred? I suppose it'll sound a little strange at first. What I really want them to take away from this at the outset is the understanding that you don't know who you are and that all of the pain that any of us have in this life is born out of being identified with a host of ideas about who we are, what our purpose is, what we're here on this planet to do with one another. That all of that is, all of that is, it has covered up Something that if we could just touch that. If we could just begin to doubt our own dark states. Then out of that doubt, or out of that, that rediscovery that, look, I'm not my anxiety. You're not your worry. You're not your nervousness. You're not your... Uh, regrets and your resentments. You're not the person that sits at the dinner table at a holiday uh, gathering and is worried whether somebody's going to approve what you've done with your life up to this point. You're none of those things. Yes, all of those things are part of a story, but the purpose of the book and all of the information in it is to educate an individual that these smaller stories... Your life, my life, these smaller stories belong to a much broader, grand story. And that it's only when we understand our relationship to the larger story, the divine story, and our role in it, and the purpose that comes from that role, is it possible that all of the pain and and violence that occurs can go away. Because then, when we know who and what we are, we're no longer trying to prove ourselves to anyone or anything. So what I want a person to take away from this book is the understanding that who and what you've been up until this point in time is really just a 
a bit of ground out of which something can grow. that has no fear in it, that doesn't compare itself to anyone or anything, and that knows without thinking about it that it's taken care of.